Ciao, everybody. Cliff Jumper, 1984. Red Rocks. Yes. The alcoholic Autobot. Chilling here while I'm opening my beer with Blur. Oh, yeah. Kind of a little loose. I actually have tr I'm don't want to pay a lot for his shield because I just got the figure. I don't have the shield, which is his nose and vehicle form and his gun. And it was both of those pieces together are going for like 40 bucks. Today, uh, as I've got Blur with me, uh, I want to do just my thoughts and opinions with some of nostalgic issues of me being a kid and now on the Transformers Generation 1 series. I do have a few DVDs. I've got... The Rhino issued box sets for part one and part two of season two. And Transformers uh, that has the three part of whatever the last season of the, yeah, the three part of season one, whatever the last of that was. I have that on DVD. I used to have all the other ones. I don't even know what happened to them. I had all of season one and I had uh, season three part one. If that was in two parts, I don't remember. I just don't know whatever happened to him. But anyway, oh, wow. It was, of course, being a huge Transformer fan, it was very influential on, you know, my cartoon age and being that young. I've gotten, you know, the toys, of course, are things I've seen in that. And as people ramble on and say, yes, it was, like, basically a 20-some minute commercial for, you know, toys, action figures, whatever you want to put it. And as I look back at it now that it was back then, I'm still fine with that. I've got no issues with it. Definitely season one, though being very vague on the background, which I like. How do I say that? I guess like the legend of things, the backstory as we got that, you know, more eventually in the series, which also grew to be something nice. Number you know, season one was straightforward with the reason why they were there, pretty much, in most cases, and I guess the pure dislike between uh, Autobots and Decepticons. With the limited cast it started out with, really gave you the sense of, per episode, knowing the character. And that's the biggest thing I love about Generation 1 Transformers. The immense universe that they started of characters. And how each episode took to one or four characters probably domin primarily, dominantly. It actually, you learned something about them. You got to understand them and how they thought and how they acted and why they felt the way they did. Especially ones like uh, Gears and Huffer. Why they were always such in a bad fucking mood all the time. I'm currently working on my top five Transformers of Generation 1. Which I'm going to put a link down below. I've only got the first one done. Uh, I'm hopefully trying to get uh, these few done here soon. In the holiday season. But more on that later. And I thought how they... Of course, brought it from Diaclone, a toy line, and made a toy line into a cartoon, which is pretty cool. I mean, I'm sure that happened a lot more after that. But to start, when you have, instead of just a concept of a toy idea, they had so many different, you know, toys to look at. And to come up with personalities for each of these. Think about it. Generation, or season one of Generation 1 had at least... You know, in the higher 20s of uh, characters they had to come up with between the Autobots and Decepticons, and it just eventually grew down the line. What did it end up ending up with? Like, over a hundred people, if not a little bit under that? For, you know, characters they had to come up with. That was a hundred people, you know, a hundred Transformers. That's That's a lot for one show.
And a question for everyone while we're on the subject, is there any other cartoon or anime who has the abundant number of characters that uh, Season 1, Generation 1, well, not just Season 1, but all of Generation 1 Transformers had? And so, please, please, link that below. I'm, I'm interested to think about that. I'm very, you know, from what it came from and what the biggest thing about Transformers and the Die Clones, that they were all real, based on real cars at the time. And I'm a mechanic. I If there's one thing I love besides playing drums and music and cars and anime and stuff is working on cars. And I wish I was able to have an actual vehicle that was used in, you know, Generation 1 Transformers and put the whole decal uh, set on it, you know, looking like one of the Transformers from the cartoon would be really awesome. There was actually a yellow bumblebee that was down for sale around the corner and two blocks down from my parents' house back in, like, 2003. I wish I would have got it and put, like, you know, the Autobot symbol on the one part of the hump of the hood, except I would never drive a fucking Volkswagen in my life. Yeah. Season 1 was very well done with the stories and the way you, you got introduced to your characters. It was very nice. And I liked the way it ended off. The introduction of the Dinobots were awesome. Devastator. I thought having the Decepticons, having the first uh, Gestalt combiner, however you want to use it, was ingenious. The way they brought it in like that. Because... Of the Transformers and with the Autobots and Decepticons, the Decepticons are obviously more of a fighting class than when you come to the Autobots. You, you look at Ratchet, he was a repair guy, Huffer, Gears, Bumblebee was espionage. All the like microbots that were that small state weren't really, you know, fighter type, as well as like Trailbreaker, Mirage. I mean, sure you had Ironhide, Prowl, Jazz, Sunstreaker, and Sideswipe. Yeah, I mean, and, well, Optimus Prime, duh. But everybody else really wasn't a top-notch fighter as compared to all the Decepticons, pretty much. Yeah, Reflector, they probably weren't, of course, the, the highest rankings there, but... Out of all the Decepticons, and plus, like, size, if you look at all the guys, you know, versus Ironhide, Ratchet, and Prime, they were probably the tallest of the Autobots, uh, except when they found Skyfire, Jetfire, you know, was known as the Japanese continuity, but he never really did too much, which was kind of sad. I really liked, you know, that he was really, really big, but he never really did anything. I think that's really all I want to say about season one. Season two, you've got an introduction to uh, you know a new slew of characters between Autobots and Decepticons. Uh, triple Changers were definitely cool. I had Blitz, Blitz, yeah, Blitzwing. <laughs> uh, I re I actually have them now. And then the Autobots will get some Combiner Gestalts. You get Defensor and Superion. Which I thought uh, Defensor was awesome for some reason. I and I don't have Streetwise. That's a that's a Gestalt I really want to finish because I don't actually have any of my Gestalts finished yet. Superion and Defensor. I mean, each, miss, each missing uh, one arm or a leg. And then, of course, you got Blaster. And I thought Blaster as an introduction for a character in season two. Which, I, they used him a lot, I thought, compared to some other characters. I, I guess they would try and push his toy because he was a little bit more expensive than some of the lower base ones. But he, I thought he was a cool character to have. Oh, excuse me, he was a cool character to definitely have on screen. And then you got some of your worst episodes ever. Hoist goes to Hollywood, I think it was. That was pretty bad. Uh, Carnage and C minor. 
I don't even have to say anything about that if you're a trans fan. You should already know what that episode's about. There's not really much to say except uh, I guess when they uh, they did a little bit of a backstory. I think they went. I don't know. Maybe it was in season one where they went to Vector Sigma. Yeah, I'd really have to get back on that. Generation or season three. The animation, it's like start really, really fucking lacking on there. And of course, after the movie happened, I'm not a big fan of Hot Rod. That's just me because if you want a spoiler about my top five Transformers, Ironhide is my favorite, and he dies obviously in the '86 movie. And he's not there. It's basically a brand new cast of crew. I don't like how Grimlock's all of a sudden the comic relief. I do like Ultra Magnus. I will admit that. Hot Rod just does not sell me anything promising. It always seems like he's the leader that's not sure of himself. Kind of a little sad. And then it, it gets kind of dark between then. Like when they go to the Mal, Mal, Mal Museum where they see the dead body of everyone that died. Uh, Huffer's in there and Iron Eyed, Ratchet, Prowl. And then uh, they had another big fight towards the end of the season where a lot of Decepticons and fighting a lot of Autobots and there's a space scene where a lot of people get shot. I don't know, it's speculated who dies and who doesn't, but that's there wasn't really anything before that, before the movie with season one or two that you know, we had any Transformers that were perishing and that was that was pretty epic, I think. And as much as like I like the concept of when a Transformer dies and the spark stops, how the hit the color in the body goes mute and basically into a slate gray or a black. I th I thought I think it's a cool concept. And I wish it would have been introduced a little bit more earlier in the seat in the series, but that would have probably you know got a lot of people uninterested or kids weren't going to watch and maybe that would have affected me to not watch it. How it ended with the Target Master and Headmaster series because I did get, end up getting some Headmasters before I, you know, was too young to realize that the show was over and they were just, you know, repeating episodes. I had Night Beat, uh, Terrible, and there's like two or three other ones that I had. But it was very sad, I guess, when I realized eventually when I, you know, the internet and being reintroduced and getting back into Transformers and like, the year 2001, 2002, I started, you know, I don't know why, you know, with the internet researching, I really got back into it. But then realizing that I, you know, would get pretenders down the road and, you know, not knowing that I would never see them until I was watching Victory. So, yeah, that's just my quick thoughts on Transformers Generation 1. And eventually down the line, I'm going to do uh, my thoughts on Headmasters, Victory, uh, all the Japanese series. There's one. Oh, my God. Headmasters, Victory. What the fuck am I missing? I know I've, wa I know I've watched it. Headmasters is the only one I haven't finished out of the big three ones yet. And I'm in the middle of Beast Wars right now. I haven't, you know, got that done to finish this. So, yeah. Thoughts, comments below, please hit them down there. We're going to hit that subscribe button right there if you want to keep checking out what I write uh, or view anything. So this is me and Blur. We all drinking some beer. So I'll watch some Transformers. And I want to know, what's your favorite uh, Generation 1 Transformer? Whether it be Autobot, Decepticon, no hate here.
As the ending goes, drink one on me.